So here we have a fragrance that just came out according to what the sales associate conned me into believing. I should have looked it up on my phone. It actually came out in 2019, shame on me. But this is a fragrance by Abercrombie & Fitch and I'm actually glad I purchased it because my wife has been wearing it a lot and she loves this one. This one is Authentic, the women's version. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's video on Authentic by Abercrombie & Fitch, and I give you my thoughts on this women's fragrance from 2019, I do wanna start things off by saying that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, or if you took something of value from today's episode. Now, here is a fragrance that has a lot of interesting ingredients in here. There's nectarine, there's red currant, there's magnolia. So it seems to have some fruity ingredients, some floral ingredients. It has pear and also ambrette, otherwise known as musk mallow in the base. And that also has a pear-like aroma. So it is a fruity floral fragrance from what I was able to gather. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on the smell, the performance, and also make a few comparisons along the way. But let's start things off with the presentation. Now, as soon as this fragrance opens up, it has this really clean pear-like aroma. And I really do like the smell of pear. I really do. It's very clean. It's a little tart at times. It's not too sweet. It's tranquil. And it matches up so nicely with floral ingredients. And you know, there's magnolia in here, but I'm personally picking up on a little bit of jasmine as well. It's a very clean floral personality. And even in terms of that musk mallow, it's musky in a clean way, but it has enough of a fruitiness about it or a sweetness about it that really complements the pear. So I really like what they did here with the musk mallow and the pear. And in terms of the red currant, it just gives it a little pizzazz, a little unique personality. And the nectarine in here is a nice change of pace from the typical peach slice slash apricot vibe that you normally find in fruity floral fragrances. Now, of course, when I initially smelled this one, and I'm glad my wife loves it, by the way, she has been wearing it a bit. Uh, when I initially smelled this one in the air, I swear to you, it reminds me of I Love New York for Mothers by Bond Number no. 9. It's in a pink bottle. My wife wore that entire bottle and I didn't even buy it for her. That was the funny part. I bought it for my mother. Then my wife ended up stealing it from her because she never wore it or she didn't. She stopped wearing it at a certain point. And this, especially in the air, definitely reminds me of I Love New York for Mothers. Now, when you first spray it on from up close, I thought to myself, oh, is this light blue? Am I smelling light blue by Dolce & Gabbana? Although that was composed by Olivier Cresp. This is composed by Clement Gavary, so different perfumers and everything. And then I looked it up online, I gotta admit, and I saw people were compa comparing it, pardon me, to Eclat d'Arpege by L'Envent. And that's a fragrance that came out in 2002. My mother owns that fragrance as well. And I gotta be honest, it does smell quite similar to that fragrance. Now that fragrance is built quite differently. When you look at the note breakdown, I mean, doesn't really even compare to this one, but it does have a very similar ambiance, very clean, floral, musky, fruity, but not sweet at all. And this is the type of youthful kind of I don't know, I was gonna use the adjective introverted, but I can see a very confident, you know, gregarious woman wearing this one as well. I just don't think it, it has any rough edges. I don't think it has an overly loud or boisterous personality about it. I think, you know, the florals are kind of timid, the magnolia is soft-spoken, the pear isn't overly juicy or sweet, and even the musk mallow is very clean and subtle. So the overall vibe that I'm getting from this fragrance is one that's kind of on the 
clean and subtle side of things. Now, my criticism is it's not the most unique fragrance out there. And, you know, even when comparing it to Eclat d'Arpege by L'Envent, or I Love New York for Mothers by Bond Number no. 9, or heck, even, and I know I'm probably <laughs> gonna get a lot of people who disagree with me on this, Light Blue for Women by Dolce & Gabbana, I really don't find this to be the most unique fragrance out there. But at the same time, Abercrombie & Fitch has not been putting out some of the most unique fragrances, except for Fierce. I love Fierce. Fierce was the trailblazer that inspired fragrances like Mont Blanc, Legend and, you know, Parfum de Marly, Percival, and so many other fragrances. But I think Abercrombie & Fitch has even put out their own twist of the Creed Aventus DNA on the men's side of things. So in terms of their fragrance game, it's not the most unique fragrance, but you know what? My wife loves it and I think it smells great on her and it has this very youthful, modern, easygoing, carefree personality about it. You can wear this one to work, you can wear it in the office. I think in terms of a dressed up situation, there's a lot of other better choices on the market, but if you're looking for something that's a quick grab and go, easy to wear, versatile, inoffensive scent, try Authentic from 2019, not 2022, like my sales associate conned me into believing. I hope you have the opportunity to try this if you haven't already done so. It's three years old and I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now first, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, not really unique, but the overall smell is very pleasant, especially if you like light, fruity, and musky aromas. This one is for you. In terms of the longevity, you can expect about six to seven hours on your skin. Not the strongest fragrance out there, unfortunately, but the performance is pretty decent. Projection was great for the first 45 minutes to one hour of application and then it became an elbows length scent right around the two and a half to three hour mark. Right around the six hour mark it became a skin scent and you couldn't really smell it anymore. In terms of the versatility it does lean traditionally feminine. I can see this appealing to somebody who's a little bit younger. Great for casual, great for work, not really a formal scenario and I think this one will probably work better in the spring and summer once we get into the autumn and winter you want to reach for something a little bit heavier, maybe your black opiums if you're that kind of a girl or guy, I suppose. And in terms of the presentation, I actually do like the fabric here on the front and the magnetic cap. I think that's a really nice touch. And yes, the pink does convey a sense of femininity and even sensuality. My final verdict on this fragrance is just to reiterate what I said before. If you are a fan of slightly fruity, musky fragrances on the clean side of things that smell youthful, if you're a fan of fragrances like Eclat d'Arpege by L'Envan or even Light Blue by Dolce Gabbana or I Love New York for Mothers by Bond Number no. 9, I think you're going to enjoy this one. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you appreciated it and took something of value. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. It's free to you and it means so much to me. Thank you for doing so. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified when I do upload these daily videos. Like this video if you liked it. Love you all and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.